Esther 6 verse 1 to 14, through the Bible, chapter 6, part 1. Theme, when a king could not sleep at night. On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. Esther 6 verse 11. The fact that the king could not sleep seems to be a very small thing, but God uses small things. Also, I am of the opinion that the king had many sleepless nights. As Shakespeare said, Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. There were nights when I am sure the king felt that his life was in jeopardy. But this night that the king could not sleep was the most eventful night in the history of the empire because it is the turning point in the book of Esther. Have you noticed that God uses the little things to carry out his program? Years before in Egypt God brought together a woman's heart and a baby's cry when Pharaoh's daughter found the baby Moses in the Nile River. By this he changed the destiny of a nation. A supposedly unimportant thing occurred at the palace of Shushan. The king could not sleep. So he commanded his servants to bring the uninteresting records of the kingdom to him. They were read before the king. Evidently the reading of these records was conducive to sleep. They were the king's sleeping pill. The fatal hour had come, and now we are going to see the hand of God begin to move. A servant was summoned who began to drone off this record, which is like a log or the minutes of the kingdom. I do not mean to be unlovely, but to me the most boring thing in the world is to listen to minutes. Have you ever heard any minutes that were interesting? I never have. I have been on all kinds of boards, and I've gotten off every board I could get off because I don't like to listen to the minutes. They are boring. On the nights that the king could not sleep, he would say, bring in the minutes. Let's read them again. Soon the king would drop off to sleep. On this particular night, the servants just happened to turn to a certain place in the minutes. Did I say happened to turn? Little things are beginning to pile up and reveal God's hand in the glove of human circumstances. God is moving. He is overruling. It was no accident that Esther became queen. It was no accident that she presented herself to the king and found favor in his sight. It was no accident that he accepted her invitation to a banquet. Now he is unable to sleep, and it is no accident that the servant began to read at a certain place. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. Esther 6 verses 2 and 3. You talk about the mafia. These two fellows belonged to the mafia of that day. Mordecai overheard these two men plotting, the kind of plotting that we always think of in connection with the Persian Empire, shadowy figures behind pillars, plotting in low tones of putting a dagger in the king. Mordecai passed that word on to Queen Esther, and she notified the king. That incident was recorded in the Chronicles of the Kingdom. When the Chamberlain read this, the king became alert for a moment. He rose up in bed and said, By the way, you didn't read there, or I must have missed it. Was this man Mordecai rewarded? The chamberlain looked down and read the next set of minutes and replied, No, he was never rewarded. The king said, The man who saved my life must be rewarded. While all of this was going on in the palace, there is a knock at the outside door. And the king said, Who was in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house, to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servants said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? Esther 6 verse 4-6 to 6. 
Just at the time the king discovered Mordecai had never been rewarded for saving his life, Haman was heard coming into the outer court. The king said, Who was in the court? It was Haman. He hadn't slept too well either. He had come to the king's house to get permission to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Apparently Haman had the privilege of coming into the king's presence at any time. When Haman came in, the king brought him into the conversation without giving him any background. He had come to ask for the life of Mordecai at the same moment the king is prepared to reward him. These circumstances reveal the providence of God. In the shadows God is keeping watch over his own. Although these people are out of the will of God, in the land far away from where God wants them, they are still not out from under his direct leading. These providential dealings could not have been accidental.